Mark Texter is the co-founder and managing director of Crosby Texter, a multi-million dollar firm that's helped key politicians win elections from Fiji to the city of London. His company advised the Liberal Party in Australia's recent federal elections. Mark Texter grew up in the Northern Territory where his father was a policeman and cut his political teeth as a researcher in the office of the NT's former Chief Minister Marshall Perrin. Mark Texter is an economist by training, but for him, the key is to understand the human element behind the statistics and, in particular, political polls. Mark Texter, welcome to One Plus One. Thank you. You grew up in Darwin. You were the son of the Deputy Commissioner of Police in the NT. What did your early life tell you about Australian society? Well, not a lot, because Darwin was a lot different. I mean, I literally didn't go to a southern city until I was, at, you know, um, uh, quite old. Um, and Darwin at the time was a sort of frontier town. I um, mean, it was um, an Asian city, effectively. It was tropical. You grew up in stilted houses in the tropics. Uh, you know, you, you grew up with frogs and cicadas and, and, uh, and geckos on your walls. So it was a great place for a kid. Yeah. Used to go. We used to go. My brothers and I used to go um, uh, uh, spear fishing, uh, net fishing, which is now illegal. Uh, go into the swamp, uh, catch fish, catch mud crab. It's quite a unique place to grow up. And the effect of your dad being in the police. I, I was wondering whether that sort of gave you any uh, eye into society and the people that come up against the police. Uh, no, I, I, it didn't. And i tell you why. Dad and I apply the same rule in my family. Dad didn't bring work home. Um, he kept his professional life and his personal life um, not secret but separate. So we were aware of what he did. We followed his career. We are quite proud of Dad in his uniform. But um, he was very careful not to expose us to stories of violence or guns or the, all those war stories that can happen in police family so we we only saw a very gentle man who was kind to people and taught us to be good kids. Where did your interest in economics and statistics come from? It started late. Um, I had two teachers in the high school uh, that were really um, uh, formed part of my interest in politics and economics. The first was a, a Mr Hanson who was my economics teacher who, 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 who basically um, taught us that economics was part of the fabric of, of Australian life and supported us and the education system that we were sitting in and also Warren Snowden who piqued my interest in politics largely because he was a quite active um, teachers union delegate. So what is it about Warren Snowden that um, piqued your interest in a sense? It wasn't obviously his, his politics or was it? Oh like I didn't really um, understand the political divide back then. I was completely and utterly disinterested in it, as every teenager should be in a way, because you have other things you want to do. Uh, but um, Warren was very good at, 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 at instilling um, a sense of, of ethics and, and, and belief. So what you saw was not necessarily the issue, but someone was standing up for something. You might not have had a particular view about that, but you thought, well, this is interesting, someone's standing up for something important. And particularly in a place, a sort of one-party political town like Darwin was at the time, that was an interesting thing to see. So when did the uh, interest in politics merge with the whole idea of statistics and economics and I, I guess the, the foundations of being a pollster, when did that happen? Very, very late. Um, I went through a university thinking that people who were involved in union to politics were mad, uh, seemed to be a, a good waste of studying and drinking time. Um, you know, I thought that everyone involved in the student union needed to find a life and it was really quite late. I, I did some um, uh, a cadetship with the ABS. Um, Bureau of Statistics. Yeah, the Bureau of Statistics. And then I went to work as an economist for the new Chief Minister of the Northern Territory at the time, Marshall Perrin, who'd just um, uh, dethroned Steve Hatton. Seems to be a common theme these days, dethroning leaders, but it was new then. Um, and he asked me over a period of time to get involved in the more political side of his office. Uh, and there was a series of by-elections and elections that, uh, that then uh, came about. And I started an in-house polling operation for the CLP, uh, the party wing, 
uh, moved over to the party wing to do it and then taught myself uh, about survey research. So your work doesn't involve actually seeking the opinions, it's about analysing the opinions and the surveys that come in? I guess it's not um, just what people say, it's asking yourself why are they saying this, why did they mention this first? So it's more diagnostic um, than subjective. And how naturally does that diagnostic ability come to you? It, it doesn't at first, and, and it doesn't for a lot of pollsters ever. Um, you know, I think one of the problems with some of the um, uh, poor public's perceptions of pollsters around the world is that is justifiable in that they read surface numbers and they read them back to the community and really don't learn a lot. So when you get involved in, the, in campaigns, and you actually have to use public opinion and understand it, you think, well, I can't, I can't use this number. It's, it's useless. I mean, 36% for one party and 42% for another. What, what does that tell you about people? Um, an, anal an analogy might be that you can count every house on the street and you know every number uh, possible um, about that street. Number of trees, number of dogs, number of children, number of families. But when someone asks you, what's it like to live there? It's an entirely different question. And I guess that's the analogy I use. A, a, a good uh, pollster, a good campaign manager understands the nature of the street, not just the number. And by looking at, for example, surveys and the percentages and the answers, is that how you deduce what people are thinking? No, you, you have to listen to them. Um, so a lot of market research and political polling is sitting down with people in their lounge rooms, asking them about their lives, understanding their circumstances, not understanding issues. You've got to understand the person, not the issue. Why do people feel stress about the economy when some say economic statistics are good? Um, and here's another analogy. So you had this strange debate before the election about whether Australians are professional whingers. Um, or whether they uh, genuinely deal, did feel economic stress. Well, neither of those two positions are actually right. The real um, conclusion when you listen to people is they, were, uh, they understood that Australia had a very privileged position in the world, but they understood that that privileged position in the world came from hard work, from um, a vigilant economic management from both sides of politics. And the question they asked was rather akin to performance anxiety. How do we keep up this good economic performance? And so that brings on uh, the salience of things like uh, political competence, managerial competence in government and other things. So it's often said that parties don't win elections, governments lose them. Do you agree with that? Uh, I never believe things are so binary. Um, they're always much more complex than that. Yes, there's, a, there's basically a stage early in a government cycle where um, an opposition um, uh, teases out the weakness of a government. Uh, that then exposes any flaws in the way they're governing the country. And then, of course, later on in the cycle, they actually have to present an alternative view to that. And then the third part of that um, journey is to present a more detailed plan about how they'd execute that view.